My full name is Danan Jayan Sivaguru Sri Skandaraja. Sri Skandaraja, best thought of in, in three bits. Sri Skanda like Panda and Raja, right? <laughs> Sri Skandaraja. You don't have to call me that, you can call me Danny. One of the things that excites me about joining Oxfam is this amazing history. We're here in Oxford where Oxfam was started, where in 1942, eight ordinary citizens came together because they were angry about the famine that was happening in Greece. And they set about raising money to help those people who are suffering, but also campaigning to change government policy. And it's that inspiration of ordinary citizens coming together, not just to save lives, but to change policies that Oxfam is, has always been about. That logo I've never seen. I've seen this one. I wouldn't have applied for this job if I hadn't realized that for 75 years or more, there have been people who've fought the good fight as they saw it. And we have to pay homage to that. And we have to build on that and, and think about what comes next. I grew up on a little island off the coast of Sri Lanka until I was about six, six and a half. And my parents were studying abroad and I was left with my grandparents on a fabulous idyllic island. But my parents realized that Sri Lanka was about to descend into a brutal civil war that of course then lasted almost 30 years and wanted me out. So when I was six and a half years old, I took my first plane ever and went to meet my parents. We spent some time in Papua New Guinea and then settled in Australia where I, I went to university. I grew up not knowing that there were houses with electricity and running water and all sorts of luxuries. My children were really taken aback by the fact that you know, we used to wash from a well. And in some ways I was happy, but as I've grown up and been exposed to the wealth and luxury that many of us in the West are used to, what's driven me is the injustice of that situation, that we live in a world of such abundance, where people have such excess and yet there are so many people in the world who don't have any of that. I had an amazing short visit to see Oxfam at work in Zimbabwe. They were combating gender inequality by working with women activists. They were fighting a cholera epidemic, literally saving lives in the suburbs of Harare. Oxfam has installed some 50 of these inline chlorinators which provide a dose of chlorine in the borehole water um, that makes it safe to drink um, and has largely prevented cholera being spread in this area. Just in 48 hours, I was able to get a glimpse of the breadth of work that Oxfam does in places like Zimbabwe. What happened in Haiti was scandalous, let's be clear about that. But I think what's happening in Oxfam now is that people are working tirelessly to put things right, to learn the lessons, and ultimately to build a more open and accountable institution. And I feel that's my key responsibility is to help colleagues do exactly that. This is a moment in world history where we need citizens to come together to organize and solve the world's problems. We need strong charities, strong independent vocal civil society institutions. And to me, I couldn't think of a better platform than Oxfam to fight for a fairer, more just world. Who would like coffee? Yeah. I mean, I suppose I only have one question. Uh, which is a relatively simple one, which is what advice would you have for me? I love the slogan, women, water, work. I really hope that you can keep, you know, those emphases. I want to listen to our supporters, the volunteers, the partners we work with on the ground, the staff, and understand what they want Oxfam to do over the next few years? What are the big global challenges that we need to be helping to fight? And then I want to help reimagine and repurpose Oxfam so that we at Oxfam are better fit for 21st century purpose.